good evening, Manhattan Nut Region, and welcome to another fine episode of Go Mo Tonight, the Manhattan Nut Region's only weekly, locally hosted comedy podcast. We're here tonight in the brand new Space Lounge studio, just debuted live last week. I'm your host, Chris DiLoretto, here in person with my lovely co-host, Zoe Roten Heinzman. And we are recording this uh, atypically. This is a Tuesday, 3-7. Uh, it's actually very late at night. Uh, it's almost Wednesday. It is. At this point. Um, but as, as you can see from the clock back here in the Space Lounge, everything is timeless. That's right. Timeless, timeless memories. But so a couple of things, you know, as as our most dedicated listeners will know we have been experimenting recently with a new platform uh, mainly not because um, Zencaster was a particular problem but it did have a couple of glitches after an update a year or so ago and some of these other platforms offer us the ability to do things like live call-in shows which Zencaster really did not um, it was a mixed experiment at best. Um, we were able to do a live call-in show. We were able to record successfully a couple of regular shows, but the um, some of the audio stuff that we expected to get better actually got a little bit worse. Some of the flexibility with the tracking got worse. And while the live call-in show, it was successful. It was a blast, actually. We're going to do it again next week. It was a really good time. But, you know, and I, this is... I do this professionally, guys. This is this is a concern of mine. I'm very concerned about the end user, and um, several of the end users of the river. That was just my water bottle. Sorry. Um, the, uh, se several of the end users, though, who tried to log in and be be in the audience in the Riverside link that we had, you know, they had some pretty legitimate complaints. Um, mm. You you couldn't see things right on a mobile app. You were not able to call in. Um, there were some oh, some difficulties there. Um, so tonight. We're trying another one. So hopefully this goes well. If it goes poorly, you'll know about it. And this is my apology in <laughs> advance. But the hope is that this will do what our most recent experiment attempted to do, but ad more adequately. Yes. And um, in, in any case, we're going to give it a try for this episode and next week. This, this is gonna, we're going to pump this out quick. And Chad might not be able to get a hold of it because we're going to do this fast. Sorry to you. Sorry to Chad. You know, sorry to sorry to all. Chad's very busy, though. Chad Chad's band is just blowing up. They're playing everywhere. So I don't actually think Chad's going to be pissed at us not giving him a task to do for free. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, so we're going to get this out by like Thursday or Friday of this week. So everything that you're hearing is going to be relatively current. Um, so when I say this, when I say next week, when I say next Thursday evening at around nine o'clock, we'll be going live again. Um, that's what I mean. And it's going to be a boatload of fun. Yeah. Pre spring. It's a pre, it'll be the pre spring live show. Get your good advice. Yes. Get your, get your news call in. You can ask us about cannabis reform, wh whatever. Astrology astrology marine life mar oh, marine life yes whatever the case may be yeah and there were there were a lot of cases that was a lot of fun thank you for anyone who um called in to the show specifically but also you know we had a decent number of people in riverside despite the problems throughout the show and actually the numbers grew as the show went on so thank you to all of you who were there for that really appreciate it next time we'll give you a different link Come on in, though. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. Um, doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you use your real name. Whatever. <laughs> who are we? Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? We're here to talk <laughs> and to give good advice and to entertain. Yeah. As befits a highly literary and stylish lounge in outer space. Yes. And although the time the time does not ever change here in the timeless. space lounge, it's timeless. That will be post post time change for everybody Ooh, else, which is kind of weekend. exciting. It is. Yes, I'm pumped, Me guys. Too. The light, the light is really important. Oh my god, it's been about a month now that I've been able to like feel the sun through a window, which is a milestone in winter if you don't realize. And now it's just yes, I know there's a shitload of snow out there on the ground. I realize that. I realize it doesn't feel 
like it's coming. But that light, when you see that light, and when that light is there at six o'clock, you will know. <laughs> you will know. It's just when you six say o'clock. it like that, it's just it's hard to believe it's happening so soon. It, it is so like, wonderful. It's an interesting thing about New England, right? Where this, and I and I've always felt this way. And this is actually independent of my feelings about whether I like or hate winter, right? But the probably the biggest virtue I've always felt about having the winter is what happens in New England. And we've talked about this on the show before, I think when spring first comes, when it pops, yes, when, it, when that, have, when yes. that time change happens in the, in the light first goes out to six, because it's been long enough. The time period from whether we count from November, whether we count from October, it's been long enough that the things that we take for granted in July and August, it's long enough that you can forget about them or, yes. or not forget about them, but forget what it's like. Yeah. You know, totally. for, forget that it's what it, and forget, especially what it's like for those things to be normal. Yes. That's and it a, comes flooding back. And it is this like, um, I mean, isn't, I, I don't want to go too deep into a subject I don't know a lot about, but I feel like, isn't that like the Freudian, like anal fixation? Like it's like, it, I, I know less about this than you, I think. It's, I think like the, he, he draws it like it's, um, it's something that you can experience even as a baby, like literally by like pushing a, a turd out and pulling it back in or something like that. And it's, it's psychologically the, the idea, the, the whole thing is a, I don't know if it was a metaphor to Freud, but I'm trying to use it as a metaphor, not literally, but the, the idea is that essentially though you, you're, withholding pleasure from yourself intentionally for oh, a time so okay. that you can experience, you know, so okay. that you can I, get it. I was really not can making any connection at all. I'm sorry. I'm no, not no, an expert I, on this subject. I think, that, I think liter sense, literally no, no, no. for Freud, I think that's, a, that's considered anal for some reason. Well, but. the idea of like, of like withholding pleasure so that you can feel that makes sense. I, I, yeah. I see the connection here. Yeah. And obviously we don't have a choice in new England other than to be here or not. You know, the but winter it, comes. We don't choose the winter, right? But that that's what we do though, is that we get yeah. we have this like self denial for all this time. Yeah. And then it comes flooding out. I do think that that is like a, a very New England way of experiencing all the seasons though. Yeah. Like that the year the seasons are so distinct and the year is just like just long enough. I feel that way in the fall sometimes too, where it's like every fall I'm like, wow. I forgot fall what this a, was like, it's you know, a whole so it's, thing. All yeah. Its own. Yeah. So I think, I You're think right. it's just like the way that new England seasons darkness yeah. are structured or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And it's just that really the, the contrast between the, the norm of winter and the light and greenness that follows it is the biggest one. Yeah. You know, like Maybe summer, dark, summer yeah. does ble fade into fall, you know, and you could like winter, like, has fits and starts into spring, you know, yeah. it's, it's like an advancing True. army, True. you know, having mixed success, but eventually going to win, yeah. you know, but like the other, the other army makes them, you got to retreat a little bit, you got to go back, you know, um, that's what it's like. But the, you're going from like full death to like sudden newness of life in light. And it is dramatic. It is. Yeah. And it I is. love it. And maybe one day I'll, understand that this is why I should appreciate winter after all. Maybe, maybe I already do in some small part of my heart or your anus <laughs> as the case may be. <laughs> Freud isn't here to tell us about it. And like, nobody even really studies Freud anymore. So like, I, I don't know who to ask someone in platypus. Maybe they'll, they all read Freud. Read. <laughs> You're not listening, but we, 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 we need some help. With Sigmund Freud, and I think that you could explain it to me. Do you remember what he's? I don't know if you were there, but there was one time when I, I said to him, you know, I'm not really that huge into Freud, you know, but I actually am really into Jung, and like he was just like Jung. <laughs> I don't think I was there. It was that. like this mixture of like disgust and incomprehension. Like he just could not fathom why someone like myself would ever Jung 
I mean, this is for those of you who don't know, Jung is a was a student of Freud's and th their ideas are not unrelated, even if they're very different, you know, but he was just horrified that I would be but I do I I do like Jung better than Freud here in the space lounge. <laughs> So the biggest news, though, I mean, obviously, we, I mean, we expect the, the, the vibe and the waves and the energy of the social seasonal change to, to more or less match, I think, what we experience in the climate. Mm -hmm. And correspondingly, you know, it's like we're not quite there. We know things are going to explode, right? But, like, we do have one exciting event next week on Tuesday. What's happening on Tuesday? It is town meeting for pretty much everyone in the region and the school board elections. Oh, that is very exciting. Yes. So exciting. <laughs> so exciting you forgot. Forgot since um, 10 minutes ago yes, when we talked about ago, it. I swear, we do we do <laughs> talk some of this through before we go on the air and, and talk about it all. But the, uh, you know... The in Peterborough specifically, will we th there is voting on the school board candidates and the school Conval's budget. Um, the rest of the towns, except for w there's one other fellow town I think that does it. It, it in was May. Stoddard last year. Stoddard, perhaps, who will only do school board elections and will do town meeting in in May along with Peterborough. Um, you know. This is again. I don't. I don't. We apologize too much in one episode, and the sharks start circling around. The vultures start flying overhead. I'm not about that, but I will just. You know, this is our standard apology. We say this almost every year, but we really would love to do the kind of comprehensive school board election coverage that we do for Peterborough Town Meeting, and we just can never get it together before this time, and that's seasonal. You know, maybe instead of our goal being that Peterborough changes town meeting to align with the other towns, we need to get these other towns to push it out so we can cover their at least their town meeting, even mm. if we still ignore the, all the school board. We don't want to ignore the school board, but it just comes so quickly. And there is, as you find, let's talk about. OK, I was going to say, to be fair, I've been trying to cover the school board. I've been yeah. looking for school board candidates for like, I guess, weeks, you know. Not constantly it was not a full time job for weeks, but like it was almost like three hours a day <laughs> that whole time. <laughs> Just furiously Googling. Banging Where are the a, school board? We, we candidates. contacted mediums. We contacted. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, I contacted a current school board member who sent me a list of candidates. But this information does not. We couldn't find it online to be available at the, online. At the paper of record. Right. No. To today's issue has some school board candidates' profiles in it, but no list of all of them. And of course, you know the town isn't going to do that because even if they could, which they they certainly could, um, you know, Linda would be like, the town clerk only handles town meeting. Which yes, I am aware that that is technically true. The town could be helpful in you know saying that the election for the town that's happening and these are the candidates. So, all right. I don't, I don't mean to be a dick. Um, the, you know, who else could do it? The school board. Conval could do it. Conval. Con, there is a there's Conval. A Conval there's dot, also dot the school board edu, it has it? its own website too. And it has, itself has, it a has a sample ballot for the budget, but no information. The budget that you have to vote for. About the candidates. And again, to be fair, I guess like, only one of the of the races is contested so in maybe, all the towns. In all not, of the towns, so maybe no one felt like it was worth bothering because they're all going to win their seats. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll just be honest with you all and say that the reason that I'm bothered about it, and again, regular religiously listening listeners will know this already, but we have uh, one particular question that we would like to ask them all, and I I just it's not her fault for not finding them. It's not even the fault, to be perfectly honest, of the information being hard to find. We've had just enough on our plates um, trying to catch up on stuff and doing live shows and, like, getting things in order. We've got a lot of stuff going on on Monadnock Underground side. 
hoping to add to these books here. We've got a lot going on online. You know, busy, busy, busy trying to, you know, we don't hibernate in winter. So it's not like we're like coming out of a stupor or anything. Yeah. We just have a lot of shit to get done before it's spring. And I don't, even if we had the info, I don't know if we would have gotten to them all, you know? So that's my bad though, um, for not having the bandwidth to like do that. But that's what I want to do. And, you know, you going to say the question. I, yeah. We're, yeah. We, what we want to know is what, are you, and especially now you're running uncontested, no one can vote against you. We will try to email these folks before Tuesday, but this is, it's already, it's, we're less than a week in, so we'll get what we get, right? But the question is, I'm not going to ask you to fix the schools. I'm not going to ask you to fix the budget, you know, or like, I'm not going to ask you about like radical changes that you can make to Conval or to, any of the any of it right because like because i know you can't do that and i'm not that's a whole other show almost to talk about why you can't why nothing nothing is going to change in that regard but what i want to say is that i believe that the school board can advance policies that are outside of those untouchable realms that can help the communities in which conval is situated and I want to know the candidates' positions on that, what that means to them, and, and how they intend to do right by not just the school, not just the administration, the teachers, the students, or the parents, but the whole communities in which this exists. And this is a broader point. I'm not going to get into the community center specifically again, although if anybody uh, probably if I email the candidates, I will cite this example specifically because just to summarize, for those of you who don't know, one of the reasons people say that we have to try to raise millions of dollars to rehabilitate our former armory bunker brick shithouse community center that's filled with asbestos and lead and, you know, I don't know. Poisonous cyanide, who knows, right? It's all in there, and it, it can't be fixed without tens of millions of dollars, right? Mil at least millions. No, I don't think we're at tens. Millions. Half a billion dollars. No. Um, <laughs> all right, fine. Millions, though. Multiple maybe, maybe 10 million to like make it the size that it needs to be, to sure. be all the things that you, everyone like wanted. A field to house be. kind of thing, right? But, one of the, but really, the easiest solution in the Probably, well, in my opinion, definitely the best solution for the town is to give up on that idea and, and find other places to host the places, to host the events and the sports and the things that are currently at the community center, which a lot of towns, most towns don't have a community center and they all have these activities also. One of the ways that they're able to do that is that they make use of their school facilities. One of the reasons cited, in fact, the only reason, the only reason that's ever cited as to why we cannot do these things in the schools is Conville doesn't want that. And I'm here to tell you, as school board candidates, and especially as school board voters, I don't give a shit. That's a terrible answer. Conval should not have separate interests from the towns in which Conval exists. That's wrong. Conval is not Vatican City within Italy. It, 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 is, it, it should not be considered its own little mini fiefdom or something like that. No, they comprise the majority of the, the, the biggest chunk of every budget in every town. And we are told every year that we cannot modify that budget. We're going to turn into Croydon. They're gonna, there's going to be no schools. That they're going to have to fire art. You know, like... If you touch the budget, you're fucked and your kids are going to be poor. Like, that's not that much of an exaggeration, guys. That's what we're told. And we can't close the empty school buildings because that's actually legal. And the town in which you were closing the school would have to vote to close its own school. No one's ever going to do that. You know, I know we can't, we can't fix those things, right? You can offer up the gymnasium. For basketball you can offer up the field for baseball 
you you can do you know you can do all these things you can have senior activities there on the weekends you can have you know all of these things are very possible in fact the fact that we have so many school buildings in this district and the fact that so many of them are goddamn empty all the time um is even more of a reason why we should be making use of these buildings because we can't close them we can't save that money we know that it's impossible right but what is possible is for us to at least make uses of these buildings beyond the school day. That's the responsibility of people who run the school district is for the well-being of all and not just to administer something along, you know, pre-prescribed lines. I don't agree with that. Mm. And, and I want to know where people stand on that. And I don't know if we're going to have time to actually demand that, unfortunately. Well, we should. We should. We're gonna send, try. Send we're gonna email. try. They we're gonna send, send email. the emails. We're gonna find the emails. You if, know, if, it's worth it's worth asking the question though because the candidate profiles that came out today are have no questions in them as as usual. We'll I look mean, at we, those in a minute. Yeah. All right. We won't jump ahead. Yeah, but it, it is important because you know I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sorry at all. I'm not apologizing for this even a little bit, but we're not going to let this one drop, you know. So next year comes around, we're almost definitely still going to be asking this question unless there's a radical change in mood, which I would love to see, but don't expect. So I think we're going to be talking about this again. And next time we are going to get to the candidates ahead of time mm. and we're going to start talking to them in February. And if they refuse to talk to us or they give a bad answer, we're going to publicize that. And we're going to make this an issue because it is one. This is this is important to today and tomorrow for all of us, whether we have kids or not, whether we have kids in private school or homeschool or not. This is about all of us. We cannot see the school system as a separate entity from us. We are it and they are us. And we pay them to run it because they're professionals at that. But that does not mean that they dictate what is best for the town. And I think that there's just to, to kind of wrap up that point here. In the event that, that people who are in positions to make decisions like this are, are unwilling to, to go that way. Um, I believe that there are things that can be done in terms of running candidates against them and, and actually advocating for and, and ideally succeeding at electing a slate of school board candidates in these towns who believe in making the use of the school's resources for the town because they belong to the town. Um, I think we can find enough people who think that. And I think that this I think this is a persuasive argument that more and more people will come to believe over time, especially as their taxes continue to go up, even though the town, as we've already seen some of from Andrew Osterman's presentation, is truly doing all that it can to save us money. The schools don't do that. They won't do that. But they can at least let us use their resources. Um, but I think that there's other things that can be done as well. I think that if there were people in office at the townhouse who – were of a mind to make things difficult for the Conval organization through a lack of a cooperative spirit, I think that that would get very uncomfortable for the people at Conval. And I would hate to see that happen. You know, I, I would hate to see anything happen to your building or, or <laughs> it's a metaphor guys it's a metaphor you know what i'm talking about though i would hate to see something like that go down um because that you know that would just be a shame for all of us but it might need to happen for the greater good so the sooner we take care of this the easier it'll be for everybody <laughs> we're here for your protection uh, anyways, um, but I, the, the other but, thing, well, I just, I just wanted to say that, like, I think that it's a, it is a constructive way of thinking about it because there's not that much that can realistically be done. And I think that there are a lot of people, even, even, you know, we've talked about it on the show before that we don't necessarily mind paying taxes per se, you know, like it's, it's part of life. It's part of what we do, but like. It is frustrating 
to feel like you have no say on this like gigantic portion of your of your property tax bill right like like you said like they have the budget hearing that's just kind of like here's our budget we're not gonna change it nothing you can really do about the conval budget so this is like a way to say like all right we're I don't know. It, it's just it's constructive and it's positive and I think that there's lots of angles from which it feels like a really cool idea. Yeah. And like way of approaching it. Yeah, and it, it it's it's so tough too because we are in the live free or die state and one of the many paradoxes about being in this self-proclaimed freedom loving state, you know, is the fact that say for example, there's no home rule. Home rule, for those of you who don't know, is when towns get to make decisions for themselves. We don't have that in New Hampshire, actually. Every town in the state is a subsidiary of the state and is only allowed to make decisions on very limited range of subjects that the state authorizes them to. And you see people reference RSA, Revised Statutes Annotated. It's all in there. If it's not in the RSA, the town can't do it. You know, people, I don't mean to be the stereotypical mass hole, but I just do want to point out that people in New Hampshire love to, you know, thumb their noses at Massachusetts and especially people who are freedom minded, you know, talking about the you know taxes and mass and the Democrats and the big government and all that stuff. Massachusetts has home rule. Towns can do what they want in Massachusetts, uh, interestingly enough, and they cannot in the live free or die state. But when it comes to this, it's frustrating because when it comes to the schools, this is an area where, in theory, legally, we could choose some things because we can elect a school board. And that elected school board can do a lot of shit like it can almost do anything. Right. Um, you know. It can do very radical things that, say, the select board could never do. Mm. But. There is. um I mean, the phenomenon that, that causes school budgets to grow, for those of you who don't know, actually has nothing to do with teacher salaries, which have remained largely like flat or like, you know, in some cases gone down, some cases slightly up. But that's not what it is. It's a phenomenon called um, administrative bloat. And that's money that gets paid not just to the administration, as it might sound. So, to you know, yes, we, we there's a balance here, right? You do have to pay. You have to be paying your principals and your superintendents a decent amount of money. Otherwise you can't compete in the market, right? We want to compete in the market. We want a decent one. We have to be able to pay them. That's fine. That's not really the extent of it though. It has to do with consultants and, you know, um, mm. other types of professionals who are neither teachers nor principals, but who in theory set policy and all this stuff, but they're all very highly paid. And so not only do they suck up a lot of the payroll that, that could go to teachers or back to the taxpayers, say, right, but they, being the professionals, being the very popular word among a certain set of people these days, being the experts in a, in a certain field, they control a lot of what's going on. And they are unelected. And it's, it, it is a, it, the, the, I've said this before, people like to make other people sound crazy for using the phrase like deep state. But like all that phrase means is that in addition to the people who get elected and change within large bureaucracies, like say the state department or a school system, there are people who are, who are just paid professionals who are going to remain there no matter who's in office. And you, yeah, you can try to fire them, but it's, it's, it's difficult to root them all out because they're the experts. They're the ones with experience. They're the ones who actually run shit. And so if any of us, we try to elect a school board that wants to change some of that, or we do what Croydon did and just say, hey, we're cutting the budget in half. Fuck you. I don't advocate that. I truly don't. I think that was a bad thing to do. Like They're going to suffer for it. I think it was a good thing to have happened because I'd like to have this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm glad that they did it, but they sacrificed themselves because that it's you can't even if you hate the public schools, even if you have a lot of mixed feelings about them. And I certainly do. You can't fix any of those problems by just 
taking it take like eliminating it now like this isn't a rip the band-aid mm-hmm. off situation unfortunately um what do you know what happened in i Croydon? don't honestly we should look that we up. we should look that up we've um, mentioned it enough times we yeah should do a follow-up Corden follow-up we will do a follow-up on that but for now we'll use it as a metaphor you know so you can have the school budget if you want to if you get enough people to vote for it and you're a small town right you can elect school board people who say that they want to radically change things and they're going to cut the budget, right? But they're going to get into that office. I know this. I understand this. I don't hate you school board members for not fixing everything because if it was me, I'd be in the same boat. You're going to get there and then you look at everything and you see why things are the way they are and you see all the things that you can't actually move. And then if you have an idea that's innovative and you really want to change something, then you're going to butt up against the resistance of these professionals mm-hmm. who, who, are, who were trained a certain way. They were, you know, educated into a system. I don't mean that in a conspiratorial way. I mean, like, they were taught this in college, like, what these programs, that's how they got these jobs, right? And they have a certain view, and they are not trained. They are not paid to think outside of the box. They're here to tell you how it's done. And you're... you're really going to have a hard time defeating those folks. And I think that's why not a lot of people are running for school board right now, because Mm. I think it's known that there's not a lot that you can do. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, I mean, school board sounds awful to me. I I wouldn't want to do it. I've thought about it before. I know you have. I've thought about it before. Yeah. Not, not, you know, obviously not this year. Um, But, but maybe eventually. You know, if there was like if there was like a a cohort, you know, mm-hmm. like of people who who were after the a same slate. goals, a slate, a yeah. slate. There we go. But Better I words. but I do I I want I want anybody in that system. Again, I don't hate you. I'm not out to get you. I'm not, despite what I don't know, Stephen Graves and others might want to insinuate, a libertarian. Actually, I do like liberty, and and I and I don't. I don't fit very well into the democratic mold either, but I I don't believe in eliminating public schools. I don't want to take away your jobs. I like paying teachers. I like teachers. I have friends who are teachers. Some of my best friends are teachers. Just kidding. Um, but it's kind of true. But <laughs> um, so that's not the angle that I'm coming from. I don't. I'm not an enemy. I don't want to eliminate you, but. We want to see that you care about the big picture, about mm-hmm. all of us. And I know we can't take 10% off the school budget. We probably never can. I know that. I've almost completely given up on that idea. I know you can't help us really with the tax burden. I know. I know. But you can let us use your buildings. You can be generous with what you have. You can let us shoot fireworks off at the high school on the 4th of July. I want that. We want that. The people want that. And I'm telling you, don't sleep on this. We're not going to stay asleep. This will build year on year. We won't go away. So if it comes down to running a slate and really disrupting things, we can do that. It'll take a few years. It's not, you know, it's not going to be tomorrow. You, you've got some time. Or you could just let us use the gym. All the gyms. And the field. In the field. The fireworks field. Guys, I've even been a public school system custodian before in life. So please don't give me the janitors can't do it line. I could tell you a lot of stories. They all have the same moral, which is, yes, they can. They definitely can handle it 100% without any disruption to either their routine or the children. I promise. I promise. I'm not going to say any more than that. I don't want to get them in trouble. I promise they have capacity to (laughs) handle these events. Guarantee you. One of the best jobs I ever had. Did you have to clean up firework debris, though? I would have. I absolutely would have. That would have been a great job that I would have absolutely taken on like a summer day, you know, when there's no kids in the school, just being out in the field, they probably have headphones on with a trash bag. Maybe, maybe one of those, um, a lot of times the schools have one of those litter spike things. You know what I'm talking about? The poles that you can pick up litter. I don't know if there's a name for that. 
you, you got one of those or or a cloth. A lot of times they have. Claws. I was thinking you were going to say litter, claw. litter claws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd be out there with headphones and a tool, just picking up scrap by scrap by scrap, getting that field ready before the first captain's practices of the football team. I swear to God, it's possible. Don't tell me it's not possible. I know the inside on this one. It's possible. <laughs> it's. I promise. Um. So yeah, so that's that. So elections next week. Let's see what do we got in the um, in the rather in, lacking profiles in terms of profiles. Well, yeah. I just I feel like you know we I'm sure we talked about this last year. The profiles they don't they don't have questions other than like what are you running for, municipal experience, other experience, and goals. And I just I feel frustrated about goals. Like what are your goals? as a question for these candidates because like all of them are like my goals are to serve my community and like give what I can and you know maybe maybe like work with others to do a great job for our town and like I feel like I'm not learning anything we have talked about this before and we will talk about this again but it's not because we love beating up on the paper because there's, again, I can hear the voices being like, we need our local paper. Don't bash them. They could go under tomorrow. They do us a valuable service and, and they don't have a lot of resources because it's tough for local media. And they, you know, how can we have these expectations of them when they don't have a lot of resources? <sighs> what bothers me? And what makes, what compels me to make these remarks so openly about the paper, is, excuse me, is, is not the instances where it can be excused by lack of resources. You know, I completely understand that we're not going to have like investigative reporting, in-depth exposés on the select board meeting and like w analysis of what it means. Like, I know, I know, you know, we're not going to have... Um, correspondence you know outside the monadnock region like covering shit you know um i understand i'm not none of the things that i'm saying are asking for those things but the shit i'm asking for here is free and it takes 15 minutes and i could do it and i'm not a professional i did go to emerson as we said last week i did not go to journalism class not to be an asshole but a lot of us look down on the journalism students I dated one um, for like two years, but um, did you look down on her? I didn't tell her that, <laughs> but there was there was always a there was a class stratification there. And I'm not trying. To, I'm kidding. I'm not trying to be a jerk. <laughs> Obviously, we, we we're doing local media here. We don't thumb our noses at journalists, and we understand that the pay is low. But here we are talking about emailing people questions and asking for responses, just like being a janitor at. Uh, public school I've done this for free no one paid me to do it we just did it and we got good answers it really just boils down to the questions that you ask and what you think would inform the readers of what you're going to publish and that to me is a really simple question to ask and answer inside of your head and if you're not doing that you're not providing a service so I don't want to hear that bullshit well, like we're bashing the people providing us our necessary thing because like I want some evidence that they care about something besides like the high school sports coverage. Yeah. Which is great. It's nice if you like that. I'm happy. There's great photographs and everything gets covered, you know, at least as well as if it was on like bar stool sports or something, you know? Um, that's fine. That's not a public service. Right. This is. And you may be shocked to learn that the uh, candidates for Conval School Board all want to, their goals are to provide our students with a good education. Basically, in, in more fewer or more words, but that's kind of boils down to that. I'm never shocked, but I'm always disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and it 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 to me 
I'm harking. I'm I'm not trying to be negative, but I would harken back to something that we talked about in the live show when our our the honorable Jonah Wheeler, our representative here in Hillsborough 33, came on the program, and we we part of our discussion, which was great, you should listen to it, um, involved talking about how we helped Jonah believes. I think he gives us way too much credit, but Jonah has stated many times that he believes that. The de- the debate, the Peterborough Parlay debate and salon that we held with the candidates, with the three Democrats vying for two positions, uh, gave him a platform to express his views, to make his case to the voters that they would that he wouldn't have had otherwise, um, and and he believes that that's why he won, and that's I said this to him. That's how I want everyone to win. Mm-hmm. It, even if I disagree with you, even if you think that the gym of every school is sacrosanct and no one shall enter, even as a spectator, ever, um, from the general public, and that the school district should be held completely like Vatican City and should have no oversight, and in fact, we probably shouldn't even elect the school board because we should just let the professionals run it. Even if you think all of those things, which makes you like diametrically opposed to me, right? If you win your seat, I want you to win because you said that. Because you said, these are my ideas. This is what I believe. And this is why. And and this is what I want to do with those ideas in office. And people liked it. I don't care if I think they were fooled or they got it wrong. It doesn't matter. That's fair. That's a fair way to win an election. Um, And that's what I want to see. And it's so easy to at least get some of that from this. But like, yeah, I want to make, I'm running for school board because I want to make the schools better. Like this, this type of candidate profile, this, this type of information makes me feel apathetic about Policy, you know, like about it promotes these, it promotes apathy, apathy because I read all of this and I just glaze. You know, I I, I was looking forward to these profiles. I'm not sure why, because because I I couldn't find the information. I was like, at least I'll get something from the paper, you know. But I just like I can't. What are we supposed to get out of this? What is anyone supposed to learn from this? You know, other than the names that they're going to see uncontested on the ballot. And I know they're right. uncontested, and that right. makes it unexciting. But right. I still want to know who the fuck these people are, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, don't you guys even remember like a, just a a basic random example? But I think it was last. I think it was it was Jonah's election. Remember, there were um, what did they do? There was a couple of funny libertarians who like ran under two tickets, yes. like Democrat and something else. Yeah, and they were trying and libertarian, yeah, yeah, and they were and they were, you know, tr- hoping that they could just fool the Democrats of Peterborough into checking the box and voting for it. And you know, even though I'm not a libertarian, I find this amusing because the I mean the Democrats in Peterborough have a, <laughs> you know, a very solid grasp on on the politics here. So I don't think I'm influencing events to say that I find it amusing to see them fucked with a little bit and it's clever on the libertarians part you know i appreciate gumption and all that but how do you prevent that take 10 minutes and ask a question and present it to the public like that's all like who are you you know what i mean like i'm I'm doing a fake microphone as i have a real microphone in my hand (laughs) this one's only for podcasting this is for reporting um who what, what what are you running for? Like, what do you believe in? What, you know, and I, we will all, we will do everything we can. We have big plans for town meeting. We hope to bring as much of this as possible to the table. But for fuck's sake, guys, like we don't get paid to do this. We're not like living off trust funds here. You know, like we just do this for the love. It's like a, you know, and it's it's for the general good and we have a newspaper as people like to point out to me we have we have one and they have they they yes they're limited on budget but they have a staff and salaries god what we couldn't do can you imagine what we could do with a staff 
in salaries mm-hmm. if we could pay ourselves a dime? Is that we just we for the record, those of you don't know, we spend money on this shit, okay? Um like our money, you know? What I what I wouldn't be able to do with the staff. Oh my god. But when it comes to something as simple as this, the people deserve better. It's not being mean to say that that's the role of a newspaper, especially when there's only one and we're in small towns and you want to make the case to me that local journalism is dying and all this stuff. Again, I'm not asking you to uncover the hidden motives behind the planning department budget or something like that. I swear to God. But fucking A, when people are running for office, print their names. Print it online for everybody to read. Don't put it behind your five-article paywall or whatever. That's public interest information. Put it on the website. Say who's running for what town. And when you ask them questions, you're already doing it. I'm not even asking for any additional work here. I'm asking you to do the thing that you did here and act like you give a shit. You don't even have to really give a shit. Just act like you give a shit. I'm an experienced professional at that as well, guys. Honestly. <laughs> Pretending can be half the game sometimes. I know it's frustrating, but you got to do it, right? Maybe we maybe you don't care about this, but it it's an election. Right. There's people are going out to vote on this and nobody fucking shows up. Right? I go. I've gone the last couple of years anyways. I confess I've never gone to the school the school board election. I at least made it last year. I swear to God. But why don't people go? Number one, a lot of people don't know about it. Number two, the bigger reason, they don't care. And who's giving them a reason to care? When the candidates don't care, the paper doesn't care, the actual... School district doesn't care because they don't really want you to care who's on the school board because if you care, you might elect someone that is a pain in the ass for them. No one wants you to care about these school elections, and so and it works. Almost nobody does. And I, I can't say that I can solve that problem or that I know the magic bullet that we can enact, but God damn it. I mean, we're not going anywhere, and over the years... I will remind everyone for the millionth time that millennials, particularly the larger cohort of older millennials, are just now, even though we're just about 40, coming into our own in society. That's not because we're idiots or we're infantile. It's not even because of the financial crisis. It's because our parents are boomers and there's a lot of them and they don't let go of jobs and assets and political positions. That's just a fact. They're starting to, though, because, like, you know, time wears down all mountains, guys. You know what I mean? There, there, comes, a, there comes a time for everyone. The, you know, ask not for whom the bell tolls. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so w- we are late, mostly by no fault of our own as a generation and, and as a, a body public, right? Uh, but we're just getting started, and... We're big like the boomers too, sorry to everyone else. And we're going to do the same thing that they are. And it's going to be us. So you got to deal with us. And again, I can't promise that we'll fix everything, but we can make a goddamn dent, you know? Well, and, and we've talked before about how town meeting, our local elections, poss- possibly the school board, you know, included in this, like these are the ways that we can can do something real in our in our towns, especially the towns that have town meeting where we can be the legislature, you know, when we're, we're electing these positions on on boards that can have a real impact on our lived experience in in our town. And like these are the ones that no one cares about. And it's very frustrating. It's frustrating. And. What kills me, and this is especially true on the national level, right, when it comes to politics, and what what I hate, and this is a very palpable thing, this is very present here in Peterborough, people have made a lot of space for this, is that 
in the, but it's nationwide. It's not just here, but, but in a town with a million, you know, a huge majority of Democrats, right? You see it a lot more. And what you see is the mendacity and lack of substance in the national politics. People are embracing just bringing it down. And no one wants to talk about the ideas because we just get the line. Like we know what we believe because we're in this club and we're going to vote for the other people in the club. And it's not about debate. It's not about making your case. It's not about persuading people because the 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 right people, the good people already understand, mm-hmm. right? And it's about getting the good people out and keeping the bad people home. And that's bullshit politics. That's bullshit. That's that's shitty civics. That's that's just shitty public life. That's bad society. And we we know the results of that. We all know the results of that. And again, we can't fix America. We can't fix all of society. Right. But what I want is for the people in this place who have to listen to us or at least have to listen to people who have listened to us or at least have to in some way feel the effects of us consistently shooting our mouths up and showing up at everything, which is sometimes all you need to do locally. Right. I want the people here to have real conversations and maybe we can't fix anything. Maybe we can't change anything, reform anything, make a big dent and all that, right? But us here, we're going to talk about these things. And there's no assumptions. There's no assumptions anymore. We're not going to assume that even things like, again, I'm pro schools, I swear to God, right? But we're not going to, we shouldn't just assume things like the professionals know best and this is how school works and this is how we're always going to do it. Even if you believe that, and even if you your systemic position is so strong that I can't change the thing that you believe in the thing that I want to change, right? I want to make you defend it. I want to make you say why you want it to be that way. Not because it must be, not because that's how it works, but because of something that you believe that you can explain to me and to everyone else in your own words and that if challenged on various points, you can answer those challenges. Even if I don't like your answers, you can answer them. You can defend them. Everyone must defend every position at all times. We're going to have these conversations. That's what we're going to do here. We are going to have that kind of discourse, if nothing else. Fucking die trying. I don't think martyrdom will be necessary for this. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it. Um, Seems like a reasonable goal. I just want us to have real conversations. Yeah. Guys, this isn't even just true about, about politics. I want us to have these conversations about art and love and movies, you know, and music, like real, real conversations, like with challenges and arguments and positions. None of this, everything is good, whatever you like is cool. Like, no, no, no. Let's advocate. Let's take positions. Let's interrogate ourselves as to where we stand and then interact with the world. And that doesn't mean that we all have to have like Facebook style arguments all the time. That's not what this is about. We like, because here's the thing guys, when you're doing this thing, that when you have this approach to all of these matters, it's actually, and always has been, even if you don't take this approach, it's okay to have people, who have opposite views of you, even if you hate those views, they, they actually might not be terrible people. You actually can be in the same room as them. You could be friends with them. You could be married to them. You know, you don't have to disown them. You don't like that. This is, this was a thing that a really troubling thing to me that began say, Oh, I don't know, around 2016 or so where people Mm -hmm. decided that like it was actually acceptable to ask themselves and others to disown people because of positions that they've taken. Guys, that's bad. I shouldn't have to tell you this. That's shitty. And we're not going to do that anymore. And we're going to disagree with each other. And it's going to be cool. We're going to have a beer together. And if you're one of those people that has a non-alcoholic cocktail, which I also disagree with, I will still sit next to you and abide by you and tolerate you doing that because... We're 
we're citizens, we're humans, we're people, and we're in this together, and we have a we have a right to do those things. And we should do it emphatically and intentionally. And, you know, with fervor and spirit. So that's that's how we should live in general, I think. But like, god damn it, be willing to disagree with people, be willing to take positions and a stand, and if you don't, we're gonna find you. <laughs> and I'd hate to see you caught off guard. <laughs> It'd be a real shame. <laughs> we don't want that. We want you to be prepared. So know what you believe and why you believe it and be able to answer basic questions about it. And if the paper won't ask those questions, and they won't, unless they sell like Carlos, which would be kind of cool, but, um, we will. We'll at least ask the questions that we can that we have time to do and the capacity to do. You make it sound like we're going to be like roaming downtown Peterborough with microphones, just like, you ready? What are you? What do you believe? Go. Defend I mean, it. By the second half of this decade, I think I think we can pull that off. <laughs> you never know what the topic's going to be. That's right. It's going to be like, name a movie. All right. Give me your opinion now. And Go. why? And why? Why is it good? <laughs> why should someone watch this? Why doesn't it suck? Tell me. You know, but we could one year we'll have like when we get to this point, we'll decline to have a booth at Children of the Arts Day and we'll just wander around being like, where's your hat? What do you think about the school board? What do you... Or, or, or like that could be like the venue for the arts questions, you know, just <laughs> keep it on theme. What do you think? Is it just like we praise any kid's drawing or... Are we like... That's an ideological we, Children of the Arts question. <laughs> we have like, um, uh, like a, a stash of like works of art and like find a random person and be like, all right, assess this. Assess it. <laughs> <laughs> we we have you know what we could do is there could be like a bench in Putnam Park, right? And like like you know how at like the MFA or something there's benches in front of the paintings, right? So we just wait until someone's like sitting innocently on a on one of those benches and we just like walk up with it like around the same distance as there would be in an art museum and be like Welcome to the pop-up art museum of Peterborough. <laughs> How does this strike your soul? Uh, I kind of love it. That could be our booth, actually. We really might do that. Well, that. We might do that this year. That could just be like our booth. You just come up to our booth and we just like hold up a random art. What's the theme this year? It's like, like trucks. Like trucks. <laughs> we could do oh, all we like can find transportation themed art. We're driving our way to understanding and oh, and interpret, you know and uh expression driving our way to art yeah, yeah. we're I, I love it you guys are we witnessing can, a golden ad hoc planning session live <laughs> it's not just trucks you could fly oh yeah it's or like a like a rocket just in general you do like a rocket oh we're doing space you guys know it we're doing space i love it i love it and i love that you know public affairs in this case really in every case, frankly, but not enough people give it enough time, was enough to fill a full episode, to devote a full episode to. And, and so I'm happy to say that, so I take back my old apology, right? We're still going to email these candidates. We're going to try to get something out there, right? But we still nonetheless at least put the effort in ahead of this entirely token school board vote, you know, where at least, you know, in Peterborough, you have no contest and the budget's going to pass. So I understand if you, I don't shame you for not voting in this. Like it, I'm like talking myself out of going. Like there's no, like I don't <laughs> know what the point is. You know, there's one candidate and there's the budget that you can't vote. You're not allowed to vote against. So I, I mean, I don't know. You could go and vote against it. I know just to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Like I, There's only so many things I can do yeah, just to be I, an asshole. I'm not really, you know I mean? I'm not necessarily <laughs> recommending I it. do a lot of things for saying. that reason. You know, um, at the very least, though, I feel like the our, our, our gift, our offering to the town here for the school election is this episode, is dedicating an episode to making you at least think about this thing that's happening on Tuesday that you could completely ignore, you know, 
And yeah, it doesn't really matter Tuesday the 14th if you ignore it for what happens in the rest of 2023. I acknowledge that and that's true. But being able to think about and understand like what's at play here and why people don't care and what is possible and what isn't possible and what we what that how that makes us feel and what that makes us think about the concept of public education and how it could be and how it should be and things like that. That's a conversation that matters and that can matter in the long term. That's what we can offer for sure this time around. And I'm satisfied with that. It's more than asking goals. Goals. And to that end, I'll just say, that, for example, in my job, right, if I was asked to set goals, there there's strings attached there. Like you would have to cite a goal that is tangible, measurable, doable, and that they can come back and look at and say, did you do it? Right? And like making it better isn't it doesn't meet that standard and it should so lots of good advice in lots this episode of good advice. lots of good advice in this episode I'm not sure what the music situation will be i'll try to put some in if i can if it doesn't sound terrible we're not gonna do the that was one of the problems with riverside right is if we if we played the music like none of the, it was supposed to be able to blend us all together and it mm. that's and that it was like a basic promise that it was supposed to be able to do that and it simply could not handle it so uh don't know what the, this is the experiment we're going to get this recording and i'm going to see if i can split it into tracks and what kind of quality it is if chad can't produce it for us for real i'll have him assess it at least and and tell me what the quality is because chad our sound lord and producer is an audio expert with an outfit called Studio117.net. He's not just the lead guitarist for the premier dad rock band in the entire, I would say, at this point, like central New England, even. You know, like it's not, we're not even talking New Hampshire. I mean, they're in Massachusetts constantly. Oh, wow. You know, this whole, you know, center heart of New England, king of dad rock, right? And he's got a uh, religious band called Salt and Light. Um, this guy's out there. He's everywhere. And he's awesome. You can, I, I, like, I, I don't even know if he wants us, I almost should, feel like I should ask him if it's a pain in the ass for us to tell people that he, he, they can book him because I don't know <laughs> if they can. You know, really, I don't know if you can book Down by 10. I don't know if you can book Studio 117 because these guys are busy because you didn't take the opportunity when you could have. And they got popular because we recognize talent and quality here at Goldman Adnock. With that, that's our episode. We'll see you next week, next Thursday night. We're going to be at the, um, what are we calling it? The Keene, I like to call it the Greater Peterborough and Keene Chamber of Commerce Gala, annual gala. Uh, we were invited by our, um, you know, <laughs> So, someone we've given shit to on the show, but you know who has become a, a very nice friend of ours, Luca Paris, who's the chair of the chamber. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go in there. Maybe we'll take some photos or video or something. It's going to be fun. I am looking forward to it. Any, any you know, misgivings or whatever that I've had about the nature of combining Peter Brown and Keen, Luca's a good guy, I will say. And I think it's going to be a blast. And we, while we can't reveal any insider information, I just... I have reason to suspect that the Monadnock region won't feel left out of this gala. That's what we've been promised anyways. Mm -hmm. that, that, so I can't say any more than that. We'll go, hopefully that wasn't too much. I don't think it was very big. Um, I don't, and, and really, that should be assumed, right? That's, we're not going to be left out, guys. And so we're looking forward to going there, covering it. But we're going to race back here, and we're going to do a live show. At 9, 9.15 that night. We're going to use this new platform, so look out for the Facebook invite with the link. We'll have everything out there. I'm super excited. That was fun. That was a blast. And that was just the, the first trial run, you know, um, with all of its uh, deficiencies or whatever, and it was so fun. So we're doing that again. We're going to do it once or twice a month because it was a blast, and we 
hope that you'll join us. Until then, vote or don't. It's not moral either way. Um, but certainly, it will benefit yourself and everyone around you if you could only find and then take the good advice. We'll see you next time.